Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel, Ticking Together. As always, the goal of this channel is to provide education about and to raise awareness as to what it's like living with Tourette's Syndrome. In today's video, I am going to be answering questions that people like you are most likely afraid to ask people like me. Also known as questions that people are too afraid to ask others with Tourette's Syndrome. I scoured online looking for questions that people were like, what are the answers to this? But were like, I'm scared to ask. So I'm going to answer some of these questions for you guys today and hopefully ease your mind a little bit if you're ever wondering about this stuff because you never know. Never know. And even if you aren't wondering about this stuff, hopefully this video will provide you guys with some insight on what Tourette's Syndrome is and what it's like living with it. So yeah. Before we get started, I just wanted to reiterate that the goal of my channel is to break the stigma surrounding Tourette's Syndrome. The media and other large, large influential, influential outlets, outlets, outlets have made Tourette's Syndrome out to be this vulgar disorder where people only swear. And although it is true that some of us with Tourette's Syndrome do swear, this is not all Tourette's Syndrome is, and I want to debunk that myth and show you guys what it really is like living with it. And with your help by subscribing to my channel, you guys can hopefully start on your own path of providing yourselves with education and maybe even being an advocate for a community because we really need it, Tourette's is so misunderstood, and it really needs to be talked about. So please subscribe, and yeah, let's get to the questions. The first question that some people are too afraid to ask people with Tourette's syndrome is, does it suck to not have complete control of your own body? I would say yeah. Of course, I'm not speaking for everyone out there with Tourette's syndrome, but in my opinion, not being in control of my own movements really sucks, not gonna lie. And on my channel, I don't sugarcoat things. So I would say not having complete control over my body is really awful. And if you could imagine like not being able to control, like that movement I just did, I couldn't control that. And if you could imagine not being able to control your own movements for a day, let alone a lifetime, I think you'd be pretty annoyed with it too. So yeah. The next question is, does it upset you if strangers laugh about your tics? I would say yes, especially with strangers because if I don't know them and they're laughing at me, that's not nice. However, there's a big difference between laughing at someone and laughing with someone. I always talk about how you have to find humor in your tics because some of them can be funny. So laughing with someone, as long as you have like their permission, is okay, but laughing directly at someone for something they can't control is really heckin' awful and I do not approve and I do not think it is okay. So please don't do that. The next question is, does it offend you when people joke about Tourette's in general? Again, I'm not speaking for all people with Tourette's syndrome, but for me, it does offend me because like, it's something that I can't help. And the fact people are making fun of it, mocking it, joking about it, it does upset me. And I do get offended per se because it's not nice to have someone laugh at like a part of you that you can't help. I think again this goes with the last question, like if you are laughing with someone in, like in good intent, in good humor, I don't get offended because like, like I said, there's a really fine line between laughing at someone and laughing with someone. Please don't laugh at us because it is rude and yeah. So that's my answer. The next question is, can you drive with Tourette's syndrome? So yes, I can drive with Tourette's syndrome. Luckily, I'm really good at suppressing my tics when I'm driving, so thank the Lord. Because it would be really disastrous if I couldn't hold on my tics while I was driving because sometimes I'll get the urge to close my eyes while I'm driving and that would be really dangerous. Sometimes I'll jerk my neck like this when I'm driving and usually that doesn't really interrupt me steering the wheel, which is good, but I would say since my case is pretty mild nowadays, it doesn't really affect my driving, but it is important to note that it adds like another level of concentration to the road because while you're concentrating on everything around you while you're driving you're also in your head saying like don't take don't take don't take like I'll physically have to tell myself like don't close your eyes because like I said that'd be awful and I really have to be cognizant about that while I'm driving so it adds like I said another level of like difficulty the next question is do you take when you're alone and 
Of course I do. <laughs> I would say I tick even more when I'm alone than when I'm with other people because I'm still not to a point where I'm super confident in myself and my ticks. So I do suppress most of the time, but when I'm alone, I let them out all the time and it's a relief, honestly, to be able to release your ticks and just be yourself. And there are only a few select people that I feel really comfortable with enough to tick around them. And so when I'm alone, it just makes me feel even better. Um, when I'm alone in my room, I will often have tick attacks there, which is not great. Like tick attacks are awful, but being able to let them out and not have to like suppress constantly is really great. So yeah, obviously I tick when I'm alone. You can't really control when you tick and when you don't tick, but suppression is a thing, like I said, and it can last for a little while. So when I'm alone, I tick. Next question is, if you could turn off either your motor ticks or your vocal ticks, but not both, which would you choose? This is tough because I have a lot more motor ticks than vocal ticks, but if I were to turn off my motor ticks, would I get more vocal ticks or would I notice them more? Like it's just, that's a weird question. I would say I would turn off my motor ticks just because I have them way more than vocal ticks, but I would hope I wouldn't develop more vocal ticks because vocal ticks suck too. The next question is, do you tick in your sleep? And not that I'm aware of. I tick right up until the moment where I fall asleep, but I think once I'm sleeping, I'm pretty okay and I'm not ticking, but I could be wrong. I don't see myself when I'm sleeping. I don't really feel ticks when I'm sleeping, so I'm assuming I don't tick, but that's an interesting question because like I said, right until I'm sleeping, I will have lots of ticks and then sometimes I'll just pass out and the ticks will stop. So I don't know, Tourette's is weird, man. The next question is, do you have Tourette's in your dreams? That's a weird question. For me, I do remember most of my dreams, but like I'm 99% sure I don't have Tourette's in my dreams. That's weird. Does that mean like I'd be ticking in my dreams? Or like, I don't know. That's probably one question that I can't answer for you. The next question is, do you have specific things you always have to say? Um, I would say yeah. A lot of the time I will have to yell the word hi when I'm in my room. So I just like hi, or like hi with different inflections. I will obviously say it a lot louder, but it's currently 12.34 a.m. and I'm trying to be quiet, but I do say that a lot. I do say baby shark do 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 a lot. Sometimes I will get different phrases that are kind of stuck in my head for a few weeks or months, but currently it is just only a few things that I have to say, but in the past I've had to say a lot of things, like vocal tics, like you have to say them. So. That's my answer to that one. The next question is, how do you control your tics in lectures or at school? This is a question that I wish I had a better answer to, but we're just gonna talk about it and get down to how I deal with it, which is not healthy. So when I'm at school or when I'm in a lecture, I will literally suppress the tics for the whole day. It is really a horrible coping mechanism. I do not recommend it, but like I said, I'm not at the most confident place where I can just open my tick and feel okay about it. So I really do suppress for the whole day. And then when I get home and I'm alone, I will let out all my ticks. And it's brutal. Don't don't recommend it. If I really do have to tick, I'll go to a washroom and let out some ticks there at the school, but it's it's hard to deal with. I think now that I'm in university, it's a little bit easier because you're kind of like anonymous in the school. People don't really know you. And so you can kind of just tick and then go away and people won't really remember you, so that's nice. But yeah, I literally suppress for the majority of the day and that is mentally exhausting and takes away from the lecture or what the teacher's talking about. Like it genuinely sucks. And just because I'm not confident enough in myself, this is the only reason I do it. And yeah, don't recommend it. But I'm making this channel to hopefully gain more confidence and know that I'm not alone. And hopefully one day, I will be able to let out my ticks a little bit more comfortably, so you never know. If I were to answer that question in a way like how should you deal with ticks in a school environment, I would say definitely talk to your teacher, maybe inform some of your classmates about it. Um, don't be ashamed, please, because I was for so long and it ruined so much for me. The next question is, is it tiring to hold in your ticks? It is heckin' exhausting. It is so exhausting. By the end of the day, I will be so tired just because I've been holding in my ticks and like try to imagine holding in... How do I even explain this? 
try to imagine like your brain telling you you have to do something but then you are constantly combating what your brain is saying the whole day. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense but basically you're trying to hold it back something that you have to do. And when I say have to, like you genuinely, you, you have to do it. It's, it's not a matter of like, oh I can hold it in and do it later. Like sometimes you have to do it and holding it in is so tiring. It's mentally draining, it's physically draining, it is so exhausting and I don't know what would be worse if they're letting out and having a tick attack or holding in ticks, like they're both so exhausting. Having Charles syndrome is exhausting. The next question is, are ticks painful? Yes. Just yes. My back ticks especially, like the ones that you see most prominently in the videos, those ones are so painful. Like they hurt so bad. It feels like I'm getting winded while also like twisting and contorting my muscles to a point where they shouldn't be. Like it's basically like your back is moving in ways that it was not meant to move but your brain's like let's do it. Let's do it right now. So back ticks. Almost all motor ticks are painful to an extent because try doing the same movement over and 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 over again 24 7. Like that's gonna get really painful, really exhausting. So yeah, ticks are painful. The next question is can you have a normal job? Again, I'm not speaking for everyone with Tourette syndrome out there because some cases are a lot more severe than mine, but I do have a normal job. I mean, with COVID right now, I'm not working, but I work at the bookstore and I am so blessed because it is the best job ever. And I typically don't need any accommodations or anything like that just because, like I said, I'm good at suppressing. And for the most part during work days, I'll just have like subtle finger ticks or little neck ticks like that. And it doesn't interrupt the work day. So for the most part, I didn't even tell people at work that I had Tourette's syndrome and I just did it and it just ticked sometimes and it was just kind of like a thing and no one really acknowledged it. So I'm super lucky in that way that I can suppress. The next question is, when you first meet someone, do you tell them about Tourette's? For me, again, not speaking for everyone, but for me, I don't just because I've been so ashamed of it. I usually suppress, like I said, oh, I sound so awful. I should not, I am not promoting suppression of ticks because that is horrible. I would say let them out, please, because like it's hard, it's painful, it's tiring, suppression sucks. And feeling like you have to suppress your tics is awful and some societal standard that should be abolished because we don't need that. But when I first meet someone, I don't usually tell them about it just because I am so ashamed and I will suppress. But down the road, if they are an important person to me and I do spend a lot of time with them, I will tell them that I have Tourette syndrome and that I do tic and yeah. It's kind of like a personal preference. I tell certain people and I don't tell other people. Um, I'm getting better at telling people, but in the past I wouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> so that sucked. The next question is, can you ever stop a tick? This talks about suppression again. Sometimes you can, and some people are better at suppressing than others. There's different like levels of Tourette syndrome, I guess. There's like more severe cases, there's milder cases. I used to be really severe, but luckily I'm milder now with being on the right medication and stuff. But being able to stop a tick depends kind of on the tick and on the day and on the moment. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can, and when you can stop it, it's gonna eventually have to come out again later. So it's really like you're stopping it, but it, only for a little bit. It'll have to come out later. So not good. Ticks suck. The next question is, can you remember your first tick? And I think my first tick was eye blinking, just blinking really hard. And um, that one, I didn't even notice I was doing it at first. I would watch videos of myself and be like, what am I doing? And my family would be like, what are you doing? And it was awful, but that was my first tick. And I mean, if I could go back and only have that tick, I would because my ticks now were so much worse, but that was my first one. My introduction, my introduction to the world of Tourette's. The final question in this video is, does medication help you with your Tourette syndrome? And this is a question that is kind of like hit or miss, I guess. There isn't really a medication out there that is designed just for Tourette syndrome, but I am on a medication that does, actually I'm on two medications that really do help my tics and help me suppress them more, which is really nice, but there are brutal side effects and the medications make me really tired. So it's kind of like you're winning some, but you're losing some, and you gotta like weigh the options. So like medication can help some people, but it also doesn't help other people. 
I feel like every person that's resin is a little bit different. Everyone has different tics, everyone has different severity levels, everyone just has different experiences. And so different medications while helping some may not help others and it's just a matter of finding what works for you. And some people refuse medication and that's okay too. But like I said, medication doesn't always help. So that is it. Those are some questions that people like you are too afraid to ask people like me. Or I guess questions that people out there are too afraid to ask people with Tourette's Syndrome. I found these questions on different forums and different websites online so they could be a little bit outdated but I didn't want to have to like bother you guys with having to ask you the questions but if you do have any questions out there that you do want to ask me or someone with Tourette's Syndrome leave a comment down below with the question and I'm going to make a part two to this video hopefully because I think there's a lot more questions out there that need to be answered that haven't been talked about and like I said Tourette's Syndrome needs to be talked about. Again, I just wanted to reiterate that the goal of this channel is to break the stigma surrounding Tourette's Syndrome as well as provide education to you guys and to raise awareness about our disorder because it's misunderstood, it's not talked about enough, and it's made out to be something that it really isn't. So I want to just provide you guys with the knowledge you need to learn more about it and learn the truth about it because there's so much more to it than what's presented out there by the media and other large outlets. So yeah, I hope this video answers some of your burning questions because I think these were good questions but like I said, if you have a question out there that you are really, really burning to get answered, leave a comment letting me know. I would also love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and like I mentioned, please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about Tourette's Syndrome as well as follow along on my journey because even though I do have a mild case, I do want to educate and I want you guys to learn what it's like to live with it and I just want to make the world a better place. I know this channel is very small right now, but I do want to just raise awareness. And even by you watching this one person, it means the world to me because you're learning something and providing education to people is my goal. So yeah, subscribe please if you want. You don't have to, I'm not forcing you. I hope you have a great night. And also, if you don't have a question you want to ask, just leave a comment down below saying hi because I love hearing from you guys. It genuinely makes my day and it makes me feel less alone in this gigantic scary world. So yeah, hi and bye. <laughs>